Scotland now. Mm. Hi, I'm here to interview Lee Foster and talk about some of his songs. There you go. Cool. You ready? Mm. Oh, we're back. I know, there was somewhat I heard it. I saw one up there, I don't know. Alright, so, come on then. Right. So, what made you write Sweet, Sweet Tender, Tender Touch? It's a simple pop song about a guy who likes some girls. Sweet Tender Touch, basically. Mm. Didn't really put much thought into the lyrics, it's just like catchy melody. I came up with it on the piano and then I've done guitar versions of it. It's a simple pop song, not rocket science. So, what made you write Killing Train? Killing Train's a very deep song about life and death. You know, life is short, the clock's ticking, the killing train's gonna get you. Boom. So what made you write one of those shy people? It's a story about two shy people, you know, the first verse is about this shy girl who I met on a lift once and ended up thinking about. And then the second verse is about like a, a young lad who's a virgin, he's too shy to make the first move and this, that and the other. And then the third bit, the ending, is kind of about myself, like meeting a girl once and in a crowded room and being a bit shy, not doing anything and regretting it and, you know, why am I so shy kind of thing. And I think it's the kind of topic that I haven't really written much about, but it's something that I want to write a little bit more about, you know, shyness, insecurities and that thing. So what made you write Pretty Young Girl? I wrote that one after watching this Chuck Berry film called Hail Hail Rock and Roll. I was about 22, 23 at the time. And it was the first time I'd really listened to Chuck Berry, so uh, hearing all these songs for the first time, Little Queenie, Brown Eyed Handsome Man, and it was, I was thinking this is cool stuff, man. And when it came to writing some new songs myself, I thought I'll try and do something that's Chuck Berry influenced, and that's why I did that one. Even some of the lyrics, like when I'm saying, she's too cute to be over 23 years old, there's a line like that in one of these songs, Little Queenie. Uh, there you go. It's proper Chuck Berry, is that? So what made you write Learn to Grow? Learn to Grow is a song that I wrote after reading the Bible for the first time in about 2000, 2001. And uh, basically a lot of these ideas from the Bible, you know, about how you're meant to live your life and this, that and the other, I put into the song. So what made you write BBW? BBW is a song about big, beautiful women, and I'm a guy who likes some big birds, you know, I'm not like a feeder, I'm into big stomachs or anything, but I like boobs, ass, that kind of thing, and it was a song basically appreciating them kind of women, and uh, you know, I made it a bit more humorous and exaggerated things and took the piss a bit, but the sentiment of the song is there, and it's about appreciating big, beautiful women. Not quite Mika, but it's, it's pretty cool. So what made you write Never Enough To Be Loved? That's a song which is pretty deep actually. It sounds like a simple pop song, but it's quite a deep one. Like the first verse is about uh, this girl that's really keen on a guy and the guy's like telling her, you know, I'm not looking for a relationship, you know, I'm not the settling kind. And, the girl's still in love with him and she's saying, oh yeah, that's cool, I'm cool with that, but you know, her emotions and her feelings are not matching what she's saying. And, you know, she's just hoping that he's gonna fall in love with her, but he never does. And it makes her feel like she's never enough to be loved. Second verse is another typical kind of story where you've got a guy who's orbiting around a girl that he's in love with and giving her lifts, meeting her every two minutes, sitting there being a girlfriend basically, you know, listening to her talking about boys that she's seeing and guys that are messing her around and this and other. Thinking, I won't treat you like that. If you got with me, I'd treat you like a princess and all that shit, you know, which you tend to get a lot of guys that really like a girl, they end up getting friend zoned and still, because they like the girl so much, they stick with the friend zone thing, but really they don't want to be friends. And that's what that's about. And it's got a happy ending because in the final verse that guy who's friend zoned and that girl who's in love with a guy who's just not that keen end up meeting each other in a party and uh, hitting it off and getting on really well, swapping numbers, getting together and then realising that they are enough to be loved. Quite a deep song really isn't it? Could be a little film. Nice little story, happy ending. 
So what made you write A Moment in Time? That's a song that's about a guy who just moans about everything, moans about his neighbours, moans about his friends, moans about the way that the guy delivered his letter through the letterbox or whatever. Everything is something to moan about and I wrote that at the time when I was living below this horrible old guy who used to moan about everything and I based this comedy on him. I did something called Willie Moan, this stupid comedy that I completely overdosed on and it wasn't even that funny in the first place. I did about 800 videos of it and I think I should chop it down to about one or two. But the song was pretty cool. Check it out. So what made you write Never Too Far From Love? That's a very simple love song, you know, about someone who's feeling a bit down, you know, disenchanted in life, on their own, and I'm writing it as a guy, like saying, hey, I'm there for you, you know, don't, don't let people beat you down, I'm there for you, you're never too far from love, you're a decent lass. So what made you write 3am quiet song? Uh, it's a song that I wrote at 3am, and it's pretty quiet, because the time I were writing it and coming up with it, I were like, Considering the neighbours, I was living in like a, a one-room flat at the time, so I was keeping it pretty low-key. And it's just basically like a song about writing a song, and which is one of the first ones that I did like that. Really simple, you know, just says that I'm addicted to writing songs. So what made you write, I ain't got no money, honey? I wrote that one when I was skint, I had no money, and there was this lass that I'd seen about a couple of times before. And she was like getting in touch with me, asking me to meet her in town and she'll buy me a few drinks and this and that other. But oh, I've got no money to even get there, you know. So if you want to meet, you need to get yourself a taxi, get some beers, blah, 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 blah. And I ended up writing a song about it when I went to the park, you know, just thinking about whether to ask her to come over or not. I went to the park and came up with that song. So what made you write I Keep Coming Back for More? I wrote that one way back in about 1999, so. In them days, I wasn't really that experienced with relationships or anything, but I was writing a lot of songs about relationships like I was. And uh, it's basically about a guy who's into a girl who's not that into him, and she throws him a bone every now and then, and he keeps coming back for more. A bit like your brother with you know who. What made you write Friday Night Takeaway? That's a song about a girl who's unlucky in love and. She's looking at all her friends who've got boyfriends, husbands, and how successful they are with guys and stuff, and then she's thinking, why not me? You know, she's taking it personal, and maybe it is slightly personal, because she's always shooting for guys who are a little bit out of a league to settle down with, and it's a bit harsh, but it's a very raw song, and it's a Friday night, and she's got a takeaway on her phone, and that's the gist of it. So what made you write One Way Traffic Ram? One way traffic ram is about a guy who is just walking down the street, minding his own business, and then some girls in a traffic jam drags him into the car, you know, they end up doing stuff, and it's all one way traffic stuff, you know, it's all him pleasing her, and then at the end of it, she's like, right, you can go now, and then the guy's a bit pissed off because she didn't even notice that it happened to have a, what's the word? Penis. That's the one. Yeah.